Hi everyone, I'm Martin Weller from the Open University and I'm going to briefly talk about uh, GoGen, the Global OER Graduate Network. I'm sorry I can't be there today, I'm uh, actually presenting on another panel at this very time. Uh, so the aim of the GoGen was when uh, OER was really a kind of emerging field back in sort of 2012 um, and people felt that there wasn't enough kind of an emphasis on research about it. So the idea was to try and grow this global research community. And it was founded by Fred Mulder of the OU Netherlands, and then um, the Open University took it on later. Uh, the process is that um, doctoral students who are studying in this area apply to join it, and we look at what they're studying, whether they've got supervised, those kind of things, and then admit them into the network. Uh, we host an annual seminar that runs over two days, which is usually allied to a conference, so usually OE Global. And then we also host webinars every month. We have an online Twitter presence, which is quite active. Uh, we send out a monthly newsletter. And it's really about trying to sort of share resources. So we create resources that we share with the community and build a kind of very supportive network where people talk to each other and sort of come through us as well. Uh, we uh, give out two awards every year, the Fred Mulder Awards, one for the best paper and one for best uh, research project. And we also try to encourage students uh, not just to research into openness, into OER, but also to engage in open practice, so sharing their results, sharing their data openly, those kind of things. Um, so we currently have uh, probably a few more than this now, about 113 members. Uh, we run four seminars in those places. We have around uh, 15 researchers come to each of them. Um, and we bring them to those and put them up and then we send them to the associated conference as well. Um, we run uh, over 23 webinars, I've had over full time publications now. Um, and I looked at the OER 19 program, which is the, the conference we um, allied with last year. And there were over 31 presentations from GoGM members or sort of past and present. I think that indicates that it's reached a certain level of, of maturity, I think. Uh, we ran a survey in 2019 and had 38 responses from 14 different countries. And I think that uh, gives us kind of a representative sample of, of the community as a whole. Um, so we asked them what their research area was. Uh, most of them are looking at open educational resources, which is the gray segment. A uh, few are looking at open distance learning. Uh, I'm increasingly seeing people look at what we might call open educational practice. So use of open practice for scholars and uh, academic research. And we have some who look at books as well. Uh, we asked them uh, which activities they'd partaken in, and uh, you can see that most of them had been through uh, most of the things we do, so come to the workshops, had discussions on Twitter, been part of a webinar, those kind of things. Um, we asked which they found most, most useful. I think no surprises. I think spending the intensive two days for those who've done it is the most useful activity. Uh, but also we asked them to sort of rank all the different things we did as well, they found them useful or not. And so blue and yellow is uh, useful and very useful. So you can see that they sort of really value most of the things we do, even if the face to face thing is, is the most valuable and they get the most reward from that. Actually, you know, things like webinars, Twitter presence, just developing a community of peers are all kind of valued by the, the community. And we're currently developing a, a methodology handbook. So we're going to bring together all, all the methods that people have used to undertake research and open, ed open educational resources. Uh, so they can that would be an open resource then for other people to look at. And so we asked our, our members which methodologies they'd use. And you can see it's a kind of real mixed bag, actually. Uh, so people use lots of different methodologies, um, and often they will use a combination of them. But mixed method approaches are, are very popular. And it tends to be that a lot of our members use a more qualitative than quantitative methods. Uh, so just some quotes about the seminars. Uh, so this uh, member said that it kind of had an immediate impact on their research. They met someone else and, that, and from those conversations went away and changed their research design. Uh, I think the third one down, I think is quite typical. This person says, you know, all too often I felt like an outsider since few are interested in the same things that I am and meeting others with such similar research paths was uplifting. And so also how humbling and enriching it was to engage with that, that network. Um, and I think that sense of overcoming isolation is probably the, the most important thing that um, GoGN offers really. Uh, I think many people who are doing research into OER or open educational practice are often the only people in their university or institution who are interested. In that. But often, even the supervisors aren't really from the area. And so, so this person's end up being so far away and isolated and in a broken institution, 
I'm ever thankful for the community and collegiality. I brag about how friendly it is to people in other research fields. And um, this one says, overcomes discipline isolation, isolation in places where open education is a marginalised practice. So I think we also, we've just got funding for another three years from the Hewlett Foundation, and we thought about things we want to improve. Um, so we'd like to have more activity throughout the year. We do tend to have a, a peak around the, the seminars. We're trying to organise some mini seminars to kind of have more of that participation going on throughout the year. We have quite good participation from the Global South, but I think we could do better. And so we want to kind of find ways of reaching out and, and encouraging more people to apply and become uh, members of the network. Um, and I think also we've reached a, a stage now where we've got quite a lot of alumni and they want to find ways that they can participate and, and give something back to the networks. So we're looking for those different roles. And I think overall what we want to do is we want to try and grow the network, but at the same time still maintain that kind of careful level of support and care that we, we give to people. And so I think a, a number of lessons we've learned uh, over the past four or five years um, the first one is, and perhaps it's obvious, but I think emotional support is as important as the, the academic support, if you like. So um, often it's those, if you look at that kind of feedback we have, it's that finding other people who are going through the same sort of problems as you are, finding other people you can talk to about these things, not super, not feeling so isolated. They're kind of really important part in that in that PhD journey, if you like. Um, as much as finding out, as much as finding a good methodology to use or finding a someone you can talk to about the analysis of your of your data of having that kind of emotional support is important and i think actually that's it's, it's often quite difficult to measure we, we tend to undervalue it you know what are your what are your metrics for being someone being a network that gives good emotional support you know it's not as easy to to measure as all the other things but it is really valuable i think um i'm a very online person but i think it's important to have this face-to-face -face and online mix so when we bring our members together, this very intensive two days, they spend all their time together, we take them out, and then they go on to the conference afterwards. They kind of form lifelong friendships really through that process and that kind of helps the online mix be much more vibrant and, and valued then, I think. Um, and perhaps the most obvious thing is that people need to make connections, whether that's connections of someone who's studying the same methodology as you or someone who's at the same point in their PhD as you, someone who's got similar issues with the research they're undertaking, just finding ways to make those connections are, are really important. Um, and I think when we first started, we were trying to find different researchers, but now we've grown to a certain size, people are coming to us, and I see our role is much more acting as a hub, if you like, to allow people to make those different types of connections. Um, so I think, although we've been looking at um, open educational resources, there are a number of areas that might be in a similar state really particularly in educational technology and uh, so there's, there's some lessons i think you can take from the work we've done uh, i think the first is that it kind of takes effort and money so we're funded by the hewlett foundation very generously to grow the sustainable community it takes time to organize things like webinars booking the travel to bring everyone to these conferences is enormously time consuming and just organizing things that like having time to spend with the Twitter profile, engaging in blog posts, you know, and just being there to support the community is, is, is very sort of time consuming. And so we're lucky we've got funding that some of us at Deakin University can then spend that time uh, doing that. And I think perhaps the, the key point is that doctoral students are a good place to start if you want to kind of grow a research field globally, because they're the people who often go on to become the, the kind of prominent voices in that field and the people with enthusiasm for it are bringing the new ideas to it. So they're a very good place to start to, to, to grow that community. So I'll just end by saying, you know, get in touch if you think that you are a PhD student in that in, in that position, or you might know someone who is. So the website's gogen.net, or follow us on Twitter, and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much. <laughs>